What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Dan Tim. I'm Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, January 25th, 2017, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. The contemporary musical La La Land was nominated for a leading 14 Oscar nominations, including Best Picture and Beverly Hills Tuesday Morning. The science fiction picture Arrival and the Coming of Age story Moonlight earned eight nods apiece. Michael Shannon surprised with the mention for his work in Nocturnal Animals, while Denzel Washington was snubbed for directing the Best Picture nominee's Fences, and Amy Adams was left off the Best Actress list for the Best Picture contender Arrival. Jennifer Hudson, Brie Larson, Emmanuel Lubelizzi, Jason Reitman, and Ken Watanabe, as well as the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science President Cheryl Boone Isaacs, read the names during a pre-taped nomination announcement, which was streamed online and broadcast on various television news programs. The nominees for Best Picture, the nominees include Arrival, Fences, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, Hidden Figures, La La Land, Lion, Manchester by the Sea, and Moonline. For Best Director, the nominees include Dennis Villeneuve for Arrival, Mel Gibson for Hacksaw Ridge, Damien Chazelle for La La Land, Kenneth Longer Grand for Manchester by the Sea, and Barry Jenkins for Moonline. For Best Actor, the nominees include Casey Affleck for Manchester by the Sea, Andrew Garfield for Hacksaw Ridge, Ryan Gosling for La La Land, Viggo Morganson for Captain Fantastic, and Denzel Washington for Fences. For Best Actress, the nominees include Isabel Huppert for Ellie, Ruth Nigga for Loving, Naomi Portman for Jackie, Emma Stone for La La Land, and Meryl Streep for Florence Foster Jenkins. For Best Supporting Actor, the nominees include Mahir Shalala Ali, Lee for Moonlight, Jeff Bridges for Hell or High Water, Lucas Hedges for Manchester by the Sea, Dev Patel for Lion, and Michael Shan for Nocturnal Animals. For Best Supporting Actress, the nominees include Viola Davis for Fences, Naomi Harris for Moonlight, Nicole Kidman for Lion, Octavia Spencer for Hidden Figures, and Michelle Williams for Manchester by the Sea. For Best Original Screenplay, the nominees include Hell or High Water, La La Land, The Lobster, Manchester by the Sea, and 20th Century Women. Best Adapted Screenplay, the nominees include Arrival, Fences, Hidden Figures, Lion, and Moonlight. For Best Animated Movie, the nominees include Kubo and the Two Strings, Maona, My Life as a Zucchini, The Red Turtle, and Zootopia. The winners will be revealed at a ceremony on February 26th at the Dolby Theater at Hollywood and Highland Center in Hollywood, and will be televised live on ABC. Jimmy Kimmel is to serve as the host. A collection of Hollywood stars including Lin-Manuel Miranda, Emma Stone, and Viola Davis have shared their excitement in being nominated for an Academy Award. Miranda said Tuesday during a phone call with Good Morning America about his song How Far I'll Go from Disney's Maona being nominated for Best Original Song on Beyond 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 Thrilled. The directors of this film changed my life when I was nine years old, and they directed The Little Mermaid. I think this movie is about an amazing young woman who changed the world. Maona star... Uh, starring Dwayne Johnson, was also nominated for Best Animated Feature. Stone, in response to receiving an Oscar nomination for Best Actress in a leading role for La La Land, wrote in a statement, What a morning. I am so grateful for this honor, and I'm so happy to share this feeling with my La La Land family. The greatest part of life is connecting with people, and I love the deeply talented, kind, and passionate people I was lucky enough to work with on this movie. She continued by saying, I'm also overjoyed that the movie has connected with audiences in the way it has, and that it's hopefully bringing bringing a kick in their steps to those who watch it. This is beyond any of our wildest imaginings, and we can't wait to celebrate together. The contemporary musical led the pack with the dominating 14 nominations, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor in a leading role for Ryan Gosling. Gosling added his own statement, I'm very grateful to the Academy for recognizing my work in La La Land. It was a true collaboration, so to see everyone else's wonderful work on the film acknowledged so generously makes it even more special. Davis, Viola Davis, meanwhile, was nominated for Best Supporting Actress for her turn in Fences, which was also received noms for Best Picture, Best Actor for Denzel Washington, and Best Adapted Screenplay. Davis said, referencing the actor who also served as director on the film, thank you to the Academy for recognizing this extraordinary important film and my work in it. Thank you, Denzel, for being at the helm. Michael Shannon, who also called into Good Morning America, expresses gratitude in being nominated for Best Supporting Actor for Nocturnal Animals. 
he said. Obviously, it's kind of a dark movie, very emotional, but it seems to be striking a chord with some people. It's so funny. I'm at a hotel right now waiting for my room, so I'm literally standing out on the sidewalk pacing around. It was. It's a very unglamorous situation. I haven't had a chance to talk to any of my family yet, being so far away. Moonlight star Naomi Harris also spoke about being recognized by the Academy after earning a nod for Best Supporting Actress, writing, Moonlight is touching many hearts at a time when people are seeking compassion and connection in the world. I'm incredibly grateful to the Academy for recognizing my part of this story as well as my fellow Moonlight family. It has been truly an honor to share Barry Jenkins and Terrell McCraney's beautiful journey. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine swan song Logan has been officially rated R. The film's rating was confirmed Monday by director James Mangold, who wrote on Twitter, Official, please be advised that Logan has been rated R for strong, brutal violence and language to rout and for brief nudity. The rating comes on the heels of Fox's other X-Men property, Deadpool released in 2016 with an R rating on its way to earning rave reviews and $760 million at the worldwide box office. While speaking with Up Rocks in December, Mangold revealed that Jackman took a pay cut in order for the film to receive the higher rating. The latest trailer for the film, released Thursday, depicts a more gritty, bloody, and violent tale as Jackman's aged Wolverine is seen fighting to protect the mysterious mutant girl with powers similar to his own. Also starring Patrick Stewart as Professor X, Logan is set to arrive in theaters March 3rd. Netflix says it has acquired the worldwide rights to writer-director Jim Strauss's comedy The Incredible Jessica James. Starring Jessica Williams, Chris O'Dowd, uh, Lakeith Stanfield, and Noel Wells, the movie was selected as the closing night film for the 2017 Sundance Film Festival. Ted Sarandos, the chief content officer for Netflix, said in a statement Monday, We're honored to get to work with Jim Strauss as we introduce film lovers around the globe to The Incredible Jessica James, which marks the arrival of Jessica Williams, a true star in the making. Strauss added, it feels nothing short of incredible to be working with the team at Netflix to bring our movie to their audience around the globe. Williams plays an aspiring playwright in New York City, struggling to get over a recent breakup. A synopsis reads, she is forced to go on a date with the recently divorced Boone played by Chris O'Dowd, and the unlikely duo discovered how to make it through the tough times in a social media-obsessed post-relationship universe. Jim Parsons says he's really excited for the Big Bang Theory spinoff. The 43-year-old actor plays Sheldon Cooper on the CBS sitcom said in an interview with Entertainment Tonight that he's looking forward to seeing the character's backstory unfold on the forthcoming prequel sequels. Parsons says the writers have done from the very beginning such a good job of building such a history and a layered nature to all these characters. It just seems like a, a really wasted opportunity if you don't decide to explore the origin stories with that. He also added, I mean, they've layered so many things in there over the past decade that it's already there from, to be drawn from. I'm really excited about it. I think it will be very different from Big Bang, but in a good way. The spinoff will follow a young Sheldon as he grows up living with his family in Texas. Parsons will executive produce a series, but the character will be cast with a younger actor. The star says, I would advise that actor that, to watch me as little as possible and take that thing by the horns and make it your own. Sources told The Hollywood Reporter in November that the new show will have a Malcolm in the Middle field. Big Bang co-creator Chuck Lorre and Bill Pratty created the series with Steve Molaro to serve as a showrunner. The Big Bang Theory is in the midst of its 10th season and airs Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on CBS. The sitcom co-stars Johnny Galecki as Leonard, Kaylee Kuko as Penny, Simon Helberg as Howard, and Kunal Nayard as Raj. Aaron Paul says he would love to make an appearance on Better Call Saul. The 37-year-old Breaking Bag alum hunted on Tuesday's episode of the Ellen DeGeneres Show that he will reprise Jesse Pickmink on the AMC spinoff prequel series. Uh, Paul Tall hosts Ellen DeGeneres. I, God, I hope so. Maybe I already shot the We They Just Wrapped the Last Season. He added, I could be on. I would love to be on before agreeing with DeGeneres that he preferred to surprise fans with a potential appearance. Paul played Jesse throughout Breaking Bad's five-season run from 2008 to 2013. He previously discussed the possibility of appearing on Better Call Saul in an interview with Variety in January 2016. Star says, hopefully I will be involved, but I don't know when that may be. I'm not going to say anything more, but I absolutely open to the idea. Hopefully it happens. I'm all about it. He also added, if I were to be involved, I can promise that it would be done in the most beautiful way because there's no way they're going to bring Jesse Pinkman back 
just to bring him back. They're going to bring him back, and the audience are going to be very excited, not just to see him, but to see how it all unfolded. Better Call Saul will return for a third season April 10th and feature Giancarlo Esposito as Gus Fringe in the new season. Paul presently plays Eddie Lane on the Hulu series The Path, which will premiere a second season on Wednesday. TNT says it has ordered the fourth season of The Librarians as fantasy adventures starring Rebecca Romaine, John Larroquette, Christian Kane, Lindy, Lindy Booth, and John Harlan Kim. Season 3 wrapped Sunday. The Librarians follows a series of popular TV movies starring Noel Wilde. The franchise, quote, centers on an ancient organization dedicated to protecting an unknowingly world from the secret magical reality hidden all around, the news release noted. Wilde will play the recurring role of senior librarian Flynn Carson. He is also an executive producer on the show. WWE superstar John Cena is set to host the 2017 Nickelodeon Kid Choice Awards. Cena said in a statement Tuesday, Nickelodeon's Kid Choice Awards is the biggest party for kids, and I'm so excited and honored to host this year's show. He continued, I have a lot of big surprises in store, so bring on the slime, referencing the event's signature green liquid that guests have poured onto them. The show, Where Kids Vote Matters, is set to air live from Los Angeles March 11 at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and feature kids' favorites from across the worlds of film, television, Television, music, pop culture, animation, and more. Cena is the latest celebrity to headline the show following the footsteps of last year's host, John uh, Blake Shelton. Uh, the senior vice president in town and um, at events for Nickelodeon, Shelly Stumper Gilliard, says John Cena's energy and larger than life personality will bring the most excitement, comedy, and fun to this year's Kids' Choice Awards. He's a big kid at heart, and we can't wait to give kids around the world a front seat to this year's show. Cena will next be seen inside a WWE ring on January 29th for the Royal Rumble, uh, excuse me, Royal Rumble, where he takes on rival AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. Angelina Jolie is returning to the beauty scene as a new face of Guerlain perfume. The 41-year-old American actress will appear in a campaign for the French beauty house new fragrance mom Guerlain, the company announced Monday on Instagram. The post reads, Guerlain perfume, the French beauty brand since 1828, is honored to announce that Angelina Jolie is the icon of its new fragrance for women, hashtag mon Guerlain. Jolie shared that her first memories of Guerlain are of a powder she recalled her late mother using when she was a child. She will donate her earnings for the campaign to charity according to Vogue. Jacques Guerlain said in a statement, We create perfumes for the women we admire. Uh, with Guerlain master perfumer Thierry Wasser adding that the new perfume expresses, quote, the notes of a woman. Jolie previously served as the face of Shishido in ads that appeared in Japan in 2007. She also starred in fashion campaigns for Louis Vuitton and St. John's. The actor submitted on 60 Minutes in 2011. I always felt not traditionally beautiful. I have big features, but as I've gotten older, I look like my mom. I love my mom. You start to put your lineage in the line of the different things that you are. Jolie last appeared in the film By the Sea with husband Brad Pitt, whom she filed for divorce in September. The pair released their first joint statement since their split this month to announce they've agreed to seal all court documents in their divorce. Michelle Williams says she was inconsolable after leaving the home she shared with late ex-partner Heath Ledger. The 36-year-old actress recalled in an interview with the Wall Street Journal her heartbreak at selling the townhouse she and Ledger lived in as a family with daughter Matilda. Williams shared, at that time I was inconsolable because I felt, how will he be able to find us? This is where we live and he won't know where we are. And now I can't believe I thought that maybe what makes me cry is I feel sad for the person who thought he won't be able to locate us. The past, you might be done with it, but it's not done with you. Williams and Ledger started dating in 2004 after meeting on the set of Brokeback Mountain and welcomed Matilda the next year. The pair split in 2007, just months prior to Ledger's death from an accidental overdose at the age of 28 in January 2008. The actor said of life as a single parent, there are loose, there are loose ends. She admitted, I think about work and how to do both at the, at the same time. I worry about the next job and when, it, when it's coming, and will I be able to get it? But when you're looking at something, there's also the criteria of timing, the school calendar, the location, the duration, and just where we're at as a family. The star confess, how much does this per work for me as a person, and how much does this work for my family? Sometimes they balance up perfectly, and sometimes they lean in one direction. 
Rapper Remy Ma is opening up about her recent miscarriage. The 36-year-old Love & Hip Hop New York star thanked fans for their support Monday on Instagram after losing her unborn baby with husband Papoose. Remy Ma captioned a video that she took at the hospital after the incident. First, thank you to everyone that sent their congrats as well as condolences. She admitted this was a hard time for me and my husband, and we thought long and hard before deciding to share this part of our lives with you all. I was totally against it, but in a fit of crying, at Papoose, Papoose says, you are not the only one going through this. We'll get through this. The star says, it made me realize how many women like myself experience the same thing and don't have a strong partner by their side to say it will be all right. So I'm here to tell anyone going through a similar situation that it is not over and God has the last say. Remy Ma discovered on Monday's episode of Love and Hip Hop that their pregnancy was um, ectopic and the fetus needed to be removed. The rapper also learned she wouldn't be able to carry any more children. Uh, she, lamented, she lamented on the show, I promised my husband that I would give him the child that he's been asking for since almost the day he met me, and I can't do that anymore. News had broken in March that Remy Ma and Papoose were expecting their first child. The reality star says in her Instagram post that she and her husband will pursue having children via in virtual fertilization. Mel Gibson and girlfriend Rosalind Ross welcomed their first child together, a son. The actor's rep confirmed the news to people that Lars Gerard Gibson was born Friday in Los Angeles. This will be the Hacksaw Ridge director's ninth child. Gibson fathered daughter Lucia in 2009 with former girlfriend Oksana Grivivia. He was previously married to Robin Moore, the mother of seven of his children, for 26 years before they split up in 2006. So our souls people, they're thrilled, and Lars is adorable. Their family is all around them, and Mel is over the moon. They're happy and everybody is healthy and happy. Gibson and Ross announced they were having a child together in September after two years of dating. The Lethal Weapon actor recently said in an interview with Extra that he was not nervous about having another child. He joked, I think my adrenals are worn out so I don't even react anymore. Recently, a gauge couple, Laura Prepon and Ben Foster, are reportedly expecting their first child together. The news confirmed by a source speaking to People magazine comes after the pair attended the Creative Coalition Annual Spotlight Award Sunday during the Sundance Film Festival. A noted People magazine signed an onlooker. Ben seemed really protective and kept very close to Laura the entire night. He was holding on to her arm as they walked in and kept by her side during the dinner. Now, when is speaking with Us Weekly, noted that the orange is the new black star, which was playing a baby bump while at the Sundance Film Festival and was seen avoiding alcohol and only drinking water throughout the weekend. Rapon and Foster got engaged in October after a brief romance. The secretive duo made their red carpet debut as a couple for the New York premiere of The Girl on the Train, while Perpon was spotted rocking her diamond engagement ring. Perpon and Foster were first linked in July after being spotted together in New York. Both are friends of Perpon's former That 70 Shows co-star, Danny Masterson. Keisha Nipolum has given birth to her first child, a daughter named Ella Grace. The former Cosby Show star wrote on Instagram Monday, Ella Grace has arrived to announce Ella Grace's arrival alongside a photo of herself holding up her daughter's feet in a pair of white socks. Details surrounding the birth have yet to be disclosed. Polum shared the child with a strange husband, Ed Hartwell, who filed for divorce and demanded a paternity test in July, days after the actress announced she was pregnant. Uh, Hartwell, the former NFL star, said of what led to the divorce, she wanted a baby really fast. And what I was trying to explain to her was that, for my beliefs from seeing other successful people, that when you first get married, especially since we didn't have a long courtship, that we should actually focus on each other and not just have a baby. The couple were married in January after four months of dating. According to Pullum, Hartwell has cheated on her and stated the paternity test is not an issue. There's no problem. I've never been unfaithful to my husband. This is his daughter. Despite the drama, Pullum has remained positive, noting previously on her podcast, Candidly Keisha, despite what's been publicized, there's always funny, there's always love, there's always laughter, no matter what. Reality star Janelle Evans has welcomed baby number three. The 25-year-old Teen Mom 2 star welcomed daughter Ensley Jolie with fiancé David Eason on Tuesday, she announced on Instagram. Evans captioned a photo of herself with Eason and their daughter, and she has arrived. She later added on Twitter, let the collection of baby girl bows begin. She's so precious and happy. I'm so in love with her already. Happy and healthy. Evans is also mom to 7-year-old Jace Evans with ex-boyfriend Andrew Lewis and 2-year-old son Casey Griffin with ex-fiancé Nathan Griffin. She announced 
announced in August that she and Eason were expecting their first child. The star said at the time, time to introduce the world to our baby girl soon, Ensley Jolie Eason. She'll be arriving January 28th. We couldn't be any happier. Eason added, it's a girl, y'all. I'm so happy I'm about to cry. I love you so much. At J underscore Evans 1219. And I can't wait to meet our baby girl, Ensley Jolie Eason. The Teen Mom 2 star celebrated her baby shower with family and friends earlier this month. Eason shared a photo of the heavily pregnant star from a doctor's checkup Sunday, writing, Happy and Healthy. Tori Spelling shared a baby bump photo Sunday ahead of her son's impending birth. The 43-year-old actress showed off her belly on Instagram with six weeks to go before welcoming her fifth child with husband Dean McDermott. She captioned the picture, hashtag bump proud, can't wait to meet you little man, my little Pisces, hashtag six weeks to go, hashtag little man, hashtag number five. Spelling and McDermott married in 2006 and already parents to nine-year-old son Liam, eight-year-old daughter Stella, five-year-old daughter Haiti, and four-year-old son Finn. The couple announced the actress's pregnancy in October. Spelling told people at the time it was a total surprise, but we've always wanted a big family. I'm really, I'm really excited. She admitted, Dean was saying, we just got Finn out of diapers. I thought we were in the clear for the first time this year. They're all in school. So it was like, whoa, we're basically starting over. Uh, she says, this baby happened at the best time. Nothing is even perfect, but I'm so madly in love with my husband with our kids the idea of adding to that is such a blessing spelling showed off her baby bump at the los angeles premiere of maona in in november and announced she was expecting a baby boy the next month she's previously told e news it's nice to experience a pregnancy while her kids are older new mom amy smart says her daughter was born after years of fertility struggles the 40-year-old actress disclosed in an Instagram post Monday that she and husband Carter Oster House welcomed uh, daughter Flora via surrogate. Smart captioned a photo of herself with her daughter. One month ago today, December 26, our amazing, beautiful daughter came into this world. She added, feeling so grateful to have her in my arms after years of fertility struggles. I give thanks today to our kind, loving surrogate for carrying her at Carter Rooster. Uh, Smart and Osterhouse, a 40-year-old HDTV television personality, announced Flora's birth December 31st. The news came as a surprise to some since the couple hadn't said they were expecting. The actress wrote at the time, It is with great gratitude and pleasure to welcome our little girl Flora to the world. What a blessing way to bring in 2017. Amen and thank you God for this special new life. Osterhouse added, We're so little excited to announce the birth of our little lady Flora. We love you more than you know and can't wait to experience the journey. What a blessing. Smart and Ooster House married in 2011 after more than a year of dating. The actress is known for the films Just Friends with Ryan Reynolds and for playing Ruby on Felicity, Jasmine on Shameless, and Allison on Justify. Leah Michelle remembered her late boyfriend, Corey Monteith, on social media with a throwback photo featuring the pair. The uncaptioned Instagram post features Michelle laying her head on top of Monteith's chest in what resembles an old-school Polaroid picture. At the bottom, the Snapchat, uh, excuse me, the snapshot is labeled Beaker Street and dated 2012. Michelle spent the weekend sharing older, folder, uh, older, older photos from her past, including looks at her childhood and early acting career. Michelle and Monteith, who met on the set of Lee were together for a year and a half when the actor died of an accidental drug overdose at the age of 31 in July of 2013. 30-year-old paid uh, tribute to Monteith in August when she unveiled a new tattoo featuring his Glee character named Finn. She wrote in July on the third anniversary of the actor's death, we, not, we may not have gotten to share a lifetime together, but the memories, they're the best of my life. Love you, Corey. Paris Jackson says self-hatred led to her attempted suicide at the age of 15. The 18-year-old daughter of the late singer Michael Jackson talked about her teenage struggles and never before discussed sexual assault in the February 9th issue of Rolling Stone magazine. Jackson explained of the attempt that was just self-hatred, low self-esteem, thinking that I couldn't do anything right, not thinking I was worth of living anymore. She admitted I previously tried multiple times. It was just once that it became public. Jackson slashed her wrist and down 20 motorin pills in 2013 amid a battle with depression and drug addiction. The attempt followed her sexual assault at the age of 14 when she talked about it for the first time in an interview. The star said it was a much older, complete stranger. I don't want to give too many details, but it was not a good experience at all, and it was really hard for me, and at the time I didn't tell anybody. Jackson told the magazine she started to improve after transferring to a therapeutic school in Utah. She says, Dad, Michael Jackson also struggled with depression and that she was prescribed the 
same antidepressants he once took. The star said of the school, it was great for me. I'm a completely different person. She shared, before I was crazy, I was actually crazy. I was going through a lot of like teen angst, and I was also dealing with my depression and my anxiety without any help. Jackson, who had more than 50 tat- who has more than 50 tattoos, said in June that some of her pieces helped cover self-harm, scars, and past self-hatred. The teenager reportedly landed a modeling gig with Chanel this month and was spotted shooting in Paris last week. British alternative rock act of 1975 is set to embark on a North American tour this spring. The band will hit the road in support of the album I Like It When You Sleep, For You Are So Beautiful Yet So Unaware of It, starring April 9th in Mexico City and will hit major cities such as Los Angeles, San Francisco, Detroit, New York, and Boston before wrapping up the tour on June 4th in Cincinnati. Tickets go on sale to the general public starting January 27th, with pre-sale options available on January 25th to those who sign up through Ticketmasters. The 1975 was nominated for two Brit Awards, will be performing at the awards event on February 22nd. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1980, Paul McCartney is released from a Tokyo jail and deported from Japan. Paul McCartney's arrival at Tokyo's Nariti International Airport on this date in 1980 marked his first visit to Japan since the Beatles tour of 1966. The occasion was a planned 11-city concert tour by his band Wings. Instead, Paul's visit was limited to a nine-day stint at the, Toronto, uh, at the Tokyo Narcotics Detention Center, which ended on this date in 1980. McCartney was found to be carrying nearly half a pound of marijuana in his baggage upon arrival in Nariti, an amount that Paul would later assure Japanese authorities was intended solely for his personal use. The amount was large enough, however, to warrant a smuggling charge and a potential seven-year prison sentence. Given Japan's reputation for rigorous enforcement of its strict anti-drug laws, it was by no means a foregone conclusion that McCartney would escape trial and possible imprisonment, yet he was released and quickly deported from Japan on this date in 1980 prior to making any appearance in court. That a celebrity of McCartney's stature would avoid these consequences than a less famous drug smoker might have faced uh, with, was hardly surprising. After all, who could blame Japanese authorities for applying a double standard to a prisoner who sing alongs inside a jailhouse and screen fans outside threatened to create a significant distraction from the normal workings of the judicial system? The question that troubled the minds of observers at the time was, what was Paul thinking? Half a pound of marijuana was a prodigious amount for one man to carry around for personal use, particularly a man who had had reasons to expect, especially close examinations of his person and his baggage by Japanese custom officials. After all, Paul had been denied a Japanese entry visa just five years earlier due to his numerous earlier drug arrests in Europe. Twenty years after his 1980 arrest, Paul would opine that his psychological motivation may have been to find an excuse to disband wings, which he, in fact, did immediately following his return to England. In another interview, however, Sir Paul, Sir Paul offered an explanation that may be the more compelling for its simplicity. We were about to fly to Japan, and I knew I wouldn't be able to get anything to smoke over there, Carney said in 2004. This stuff was too good to flush down the toilet, so I thought I'd take it with me. And as your entertainment report for Wednesday, January 25th, 2017, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R Y M E L O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report, and I'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.